Hello and welcome to How to Stop Groin Pain and Related Symptoms of Iliopsoas Muscle Dysfunction. In this video, I'm going to describe various symptoms of Iliopsoas Muscle Dysfunction and then tell you how they occur so that you can understand how the program Free Your Psoas effectively and efficiently addresses those symptoms. Effectively and efficiently means pain gone, mobility improved, and related symptoms such as joint pain dissolved. At the end, I'll say more about how you can go about actually eliminating those symptoms. My name is Lawrence Gold. I'm a practicing clinical somatic educator in practice since 1990. Now on to the symptoms of iliopsoas muscle dysfunction. I'm going to touch on three major symptoms. Groin pain, hip joint pain, and abdominal pain. First, groin pain. The iliopsoas muscle starts at the level roughly of the diaphragm and goes deep to the organs through the pelvis and surfaces at the bottom where the ridge of the pelvis is, where it meets the leg. The tendon of the psoas muscle goes over that ridge and then goes back and inserts on the inner surface of the groin. When the psoas muscles are tight, they pull upon that tendon and that tendon in turn pulls upon and presses against the bursa over which the tendon passes on its way to the inner groin. A bursa is a fluid filled sac that acts like a pulley lubricating the surface over which the tendon passes when it changes its angle of direction as it does with the psoas muscles. When the psoas muscles are tight and that tendon is taut, it presses against the bursa, the bursa becomes irritated and the diagnosis given is bursitis. So the tension of the iliopsoas muscles accounts for bursitis and groin pain. Now, another symptom of an overtight psoas is hip joint pain because of the location of the attachment of the iliopsoas tendon. When that muscle is tight, it pulls the head of the thigh bone, which contains one surface of the hip joint. It pulls it forward against the edge of the other surface, which belongs to the pelvis. And that off-center pressure grinds against the lip of that hip joint and leads to breakdown and the diagnosis given for that is torn labrum and it's generally a surgical procedure. Unfortunately, correcting a torn labrum by a surgical procedure does nothing to correct the cause which is the tension of the iliopsoas muscles causing the tendon to be taut and to pull on the head of the thigh bone against the edge or lip of the hip joint. So even if surgery is done, it hasn't addressed the underlying condition. By the way, the same is true of hip joint replacement surgery, which commonly triggers muscular contractions all around the hip joint. It's one of the major origins of pain post-surgically for hip joint replacement surgery an area around the stomach may show symptoms of a tight psoas as a bellyache. So I've talked about groin pain, hip joint pain, and abdominal pain. All three, now you understand, get caused by tight iliopsoas muscles. Question, how do those muscles get tight to begin with? There are two major ways. One is through an injury to the leg or foot which makes you want to take weight off that foot or leg by lifting it up, which generally means bringing the knee forward to lift the foot off the ground. That action comes from the tension of the iliopsoas muscles on that side 
and the hip joint flexors on that side. Now a word about the hip joint flexors, just so you know what I'm talking about. The hip joint flexors are muscles that originate at the side of the hip in front and connect to the thigh bone at the top and they're deep to where the front trousers pockets are on pants. That's generally where the hip flexors are. When a person gets injured and they want to lift weight off that foot, they tighten both the psoas muscles and the hip joint flexor muscles. So that action of lifting the knee forward and up generally lasts for a space of weeks during a period of injury. It might be a cut to the foot or it could be a turned ankle or even a stubbed toe. All actions that make you want to lift weight off that side lead to a lengthy period of contraction in those muscles which then forms into a tension habit. A tension habit that can't be countered by stretching because it's conditioning and you can't counter conditioning by stretching the muscles. The conditioning lives in the brain. Another form of conditioning that people form comes from sitting at a high level of attention generally perched on the front of a chair in front of a computer and the action of sitting in that position tightens the flexor muscles and the psoas muscles. Spend many hours in that shape and you form a tension habit. The psoas muscles get tight from sitting too much at a high level of concentration for long periods with no interruption of the tension pattern and at a high level of concentration. So those are the two major ways that iliopsoas muscle dysfunction forms. Both involve habituated tension, tension habits that form from lengthy periods of holding. So you see how the problem of psoas muscles being too tight doesn't lie in the psoas muscles themselves but actually in the brain that controls them. And for that reason, strengthening, stretching, and manipulation are ineffective in freeing up tight iliopsoas muscles, as you've already experienced from your previous experience of therapy. So there is a way to free the muscles, and it's actually rather easy and comfortable to do, and it's an action called pandiculation. Pandiculation is an action pattern that everybody has seen and done. It's the sensuous morning stretch and not the, by the way, the athletic stretch, which is a forcible movement against the tension of muscles. The morning stretch is actually not a stretch at all. It's a tightening up of various muscles in various sensuous ways. All animals do it instinctually. You've seen cats and dogs do it. Humans do it upon arising from sleep very commonly. The action of pandiculation sends a strong stimulation to the brain, a sensation of the action of pandiculation itself, which is a movement action. So the combination of the movement action and the sensation reforges the, con the connection of voluntary control over those muscles. People commonly do it only say, oh, I don't know, arching the back or the neck and shoulders and mouth, but the action of pandiculation can be applied to any habituated tension pattern, and that can be applied then to tight iliopsoas muscles by tightening them in the way that they're already too tight. The action of tightening them in the way they're already too tight shifts control over the muscular tension from the levels of the brain that maintain the tension involuntarily back to voluntary control. If you do deliberately what's happening automatically, control shifts to the voluntary action of tightening. So that's generally how pandiculation works, that it involves particular movement patterns. Now because the iliopsoas muscles are core muscles, the entire muscular movement system is involved with the actions of the iliopsoas muscles. So one may free the iliopsoas muscles and if one does so without correcting 
the entire coordination pattern by which we maintain balance and walking and standing and sitting with muscles other than the iliopsoas muscles. If we change only the iliopsoas muscles, the larger pattern which continues tends to call the iliopsoas muscles back into the habitual tension pattern. For that reason, it's necessary to address the other parts of the tension pattern of which the iliopsoas muscles are one part. I said that I would tell you about a way to free those in a methodical way, which is the program I've developed for this purpose, for your psoas. I developed that program actually for my own sake, because I was having psoas trouble. I was having pain on the inner right surface of my pelvis, on the inside, and at the groin. And so I set about to develop a way to correct that in myself. And when I got far enough along in the development of the exercises that produced that result, I did video recording of them and then created the program Free Your Psoas. So the first guinea pig was myself, and then it's been other people who have had the same kind of problem. The program Free Your Psoas consists of nine major lessons in control of the movements that the iliopsoas muscles are stuck in so that you come out of the stuck condition. The muscles become pliant and free and it's done entirely comfortably. You don't have to stretch. All you have to do is learn to gain control of the involved muscles. The program contains two major sections. One is a self-correction section and the other is a maintenance section and you do the maintenance section after you've gotten the results from the self-correction section. It's a two DVD set available both on disc and via electronic download. 